are back here at Blue Water Campus with Rob. Rob, back. how are you, mate? How are you, boys? Yeah, Welcome back. Been here. You missed out on the last trip, mate. So I'll tell you what, you missed out on a hell of a trip. I've heard all these stories about these bad boys. But you guys are taking uh, my two premium models this time. So nice. you're going to take the Macquarie, which is more your couple's version. Yep. So you, you two guys, you know Bunk Rider. Good. You go, um, Jesse. Good. Good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll also take the Lockler, which is a family version. Yep. And uh, I'm going to show you some pretty cool stuff. Where are we going, Mickey? We're going down to the 90 Mile Beach, mate. One of my favourite destinations, as everyone on the show well knows. Is that where I blew up Jess's backpack? No, well, that was a late tie, so just after. Oh, yeah, you're off, right. Yes, yeah, sorry. Was, yeah. Now, Rob was meant to come with us, but he's got to go to China. Yeah, I do. I got him Some excuse, overseas, mate. So. Some excuse. Yeah. Rob, you're going to run over these trailers like last time with the Darling. Yeah. And this is the Macquarie. You're going to run over all the ins and outs. I definitely will. Yes. There's something pretty special. I know. Always... You've shown me this before, mate, and yeah. I'm really, really keen to show the viewers this because this is something pretty special for a trailer. So, Mick, basically, the concept of this is you remove your 50 mil tow ball that yep. goes straight onto your tongue. Yep. All you do is back in, it's automatic, it locks in. One safety pin, one clip, you're away. You want to undo it, pins back out, lift the handle, out it goes, you drive away. That's amazing technology, mate. Fantastic, looks mate. So simple. So simple, simple, easy, can't beat it. Rob, it's going to be 38 degrees down on the beach, mate. Air conditioner, come, come with one. Split mate, system. You don't need air conditioner in this, this has got big windows, big ventilation. Yep. That's all you need. Excellent, and a, and a big fridge. I put a big fridge in it <laughs> so I can hop in it. Absolutely. And watch this. <laughs> One touch operation, out she comes. Yep. You're done. Check out the size of this thing. Wow. It's bigger than the one I got at home. Out this one comes. Undo wow. that. Flip that over. There's your stove. There's oh, your dish nice. rack. Nice. And this kitchen is hard plumbed with a snake track. Yep. So there's no water fittings, there's yep. no power fittings, there's no gas connection. You pull it out, it's ready to roll. If you want to separate the beds here, put the cushions on, yep. leave the table down and put the other two cushions here with the back rest up and you'll create a double with a divider and another double. Here we go, my man. Bye. Keep going. Yeah. That's yeah. it. My wife absolutely hates camping. She's probably a bit of a glamper. Now I'm trying this out this weekend and I'm gonna see if it gets the Mich Michelle tick of approval, I'm probably gonna end up buying one because uh, somewhere between glamping and camping. So let's let's run that trial. He loves glamping just as much as his wife. Let me tell you. Guilty, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna see. So Robbie boy, thanks for your help. Mate, we had a few uh, issues getting hitched up. That was our issue, not theirs. But, absolutely. Um, the boys were very helpful, so thank uh, you very much. Hey, wasn't our issue, mate. It was our cameraman's issue. Yeah, he's a bit special, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's for you, Scotty. You are a bit special, okay, absolutely, mate. Absolutely, mate. Look, we get it all the time. Yeah. You know, people don't service their hitches and their balls, and they get rusty, and they well, balls are rusty. Rusty. <laughs> balls are rusty. Well, pleasure, mate. No worries. You enjoy your trip. <laughs> Good on you, mate. Good on you, mate. No worries, boys. Enjoy. Beach in Victoria along the coastline here, and it's in one of my favourite fishing destinations. So Jesse over here about to cast out. Chris is up there looking like he has no idea what he's doing, but he hates surf fishing. He loves being on the boat, <laughs> but he's having fun. Yeah. That's amazing. And apparently, yeah, I just got a bite, but that's all right. Yeah, whack. Had one whack. We've only been here about five minutes. Been blown about 30 knots. It's just dropped down about 15, and the sun's just set. So we're going to see what we come up with over the next couple of days. 
and hopefully we can bring you something special down here on the 90 Mile Beach. Well, fishing has been a bit of a bust tonight, so around the camp, well, say campfire, there's no campfire around the Blue Water Camper under the annex, having a bit of fun. Chris hello. always likes to have a bit of fun. Thank you, buddy. I do. Hey. Well, I do. hello, we're, viewers. We're, we're playing a bit of a game tonight with, with the crew, mate. We are. It's called the Dum Dum Stick, and um, this is how it works. So, this is the story of the Dum Dum Stick. We've got a hammer, this is our Dum Dum Stick. Okay, now this is how it goes. This is the story of the Dum Dum Stick. Vixen, you'll go. Come next, so. You do this. This is the story of the dumb, dumb stick. Close, but not close enough. The story of the dumb, dumb stick. Chris has got it. This is the story of the dumb, dumb stick. Very close, but no cigar. Other <laughs> oh Jess. Come on, Jessica. Okay. <laughs> oh, she's worked it out. Dumb, she's stick. got it. You got it. Yeah. You know what he's doing? I think so. I think Nick's going to get it. He's got it. This he's got it. No, oh, don't show him, don't show him. No, no, we're going to do it. No, I've got to. Alright, now, they're going to, we've got another game to play after this because, you know, this is what we do. Um, and I'm going to tell when all your viewers at home. And nothing's fighting. I'm going to tell all your viewers at home. You've got to watch the hand. The only problem is everyone's watching the wrong hand. Hand on this knee. This is the story of the dumb, dumb stick. And it's then you get it right. You're watching. <laughs> I was watching your that hand. Gotta be this on hand was knee, never on the knee. knee. <laughs> Everyone, you've okay. got to have that Jesse, hand on do the it. knee. I was, watch, I was watching that hand, but Jesse I was waiting it. for you to move it or something. Oh, That's all it is. Put your hand. hand on your knee, you bastard. Yes. And you got it. Yes. Well done. That's, Wait, so, That's, That's the story of the dumb dumb stick viewers. <laughs> I hope that was enjoyable. I hope we can get some fishing done tomorrow because, uh, yeah, that wasn't so entertaining, was it? <laughs> that was normal stuff. Here we are up on the big viewing platform at Sea Spray, overlooking the 90 mile beach behind me. Now, not all these beaches have these platforms, but they do have big high sand dunes, which is the best thing to do is get up here and have a look before you start fishing and try and find the gutters. A lot of people ask me about gutters. Gutters are pretty simple to find. All you've got to do is look. You'll, most beaches will have a front gutter and a back gutter. You can decide which one you want to fish. Both will hold fish and different types of species at different times of the day. Now, where your white water's breaking, where the wave kips over and you can see the white water start to form, that's where the sand is. So that's not where you want to put your bait. You want to find where that white water stops and it's just dark water. After that, that's the deeper hole. And if you can try and get right in between that shallow area and the deeper area, that's a good spot to start. But right along here, we've got a nice, nice gutter. Anywhere along here is great to fish. You've just got to get your bait in that right spot. Bait in the water. Managed to hook something. Looks a bit like a salmon, might be a flathead, I think. Definitely not fighting like a salmon, but maybe I'm right. Bloody. Got a nice flathead. You get some really great blue spot flathead off the surf, and this is one of the best eating fish in the world. I love these fish. I love catching these more than I love catching salmon off the surf. Beautiful size flathead, great for the dinner table. And for us it's gonna be the breakfast table. Well down here last night the side wash was insane. It's, a little, it's still a little bit but not nearly as bad as what it was. But yeah, no, I'm very happy with that for my, uh, my first cast. I reckon that's about a 40 plus centimetre flathead. And uh, I'm really keen to get, get a bait back in the water. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to bait presentation on the surf, you, your bait gets rolled around and washed around in the surf waves. And um, it doesn't really look that appetising. But anyway, neither does a pilchard, to be honest. 
But these little salty pilchers can work wonders on salmon and flathead. So basically, what I do is I pin it through the back, that's about halfway down, oh sorry, about almost halfway down the, the blue bait, punch it all the way through, and then just back again. So basically, the bait will sit like that with good hook exposure. That is vital. Do a half hitch. A lot of people do a half hitch. The reason why I run a glow bead is because you run the glow bead down to the half hitch on a dropper loop and it keeps the half hitch there. And also, we've got this great little thing called Bait Buddy. Now, our good friends at Black Magic are known for just making quality stuff. And it's the one percenters like this that really help all sorts of fishing. And this one just happens to be for surf fishing. It's called Bait Buddy. It's like a little cotton. And all you do, I start at the, at the top of the hook. And that way, you keep and just run it down to the, just under the point of the hook. And just snap it off. So a little bit hanging down there, that'll get eaten by crabs. That Bait Buddy keeps that bit of bait on there for as long as possible on your hook for the fish to come up and nail it. Make sure you've got good hook exposure. I've got a popper up the top for a bit of extra luck, because when the bait does come off eventually, the popper still works. So I'm gonna keep it in the airport. And here he comes on the popper. Now that's great. He's a little bit smaller than the other one, but he's definitely size. We measured the other one before, it was 47 centimetres. This one's probably about 41 or 42. He's a lot cleaner looking fish, Jesse. He is. And I'll tell you what, I'm taking that rod off you. <laughs> taking your spot. He's, um, I'll just change over to a popper as well. I had one popper left in my tackle box and I thought, well, you know, when in Rome, do what the Romans do. And that's what I've done. And that's another thing, Nick, is that a lot of people don't realise poppers aren't just for salmon, are they? No, uh, poppers, I've, I've caught gummies on poppers, mate. Yeah. Um, obviously, I put a little bit of bait on them, not a lot, but you don't have to put bait on them either. But, mate, I'm going to, we're going to have a nice bit of flathead, so I'm going to dispatch this guy as humanely as possible and quickly as possible. And uh, put some more blue bait on, mate. Awesome. So that's, uh, yeah, that blue bait's fantastic, isn't it? Beautiful. So that's a tip for you guys at home. When in doubt, chuck a popper on. Yeah. Could always turn up that fish that you've been waiting for. And if for. you're on a Pananoster rig too, try and keep the popper on the top. And I'll show you the I'll show you the rig setup we've got anyway, but that's great. That's two, two for three casts. I'm pretty happy. Beautiful. Now I'm casting out. We've got a gutter out here that's quite close. And then a sandbar. Everyone always tries to get to that back gutter. Sometimes you can't get to it. It's a little bit out of reach for us today. But the front gut is quite good. So instead of trying to cast and just have your bait washing onto, onto the sand, just fish the front gutter. It's worked for us today. Still feels like a flathead though, but it's definitely putting up a, a better fight. Well, maybe it isn't. Here he comes, right to feet. They camouflage well in with the sand. So, Jesse, it's hit high tide, mate. Yeah, it's hit high tide, the fishing's starting to slow down. Got down here at about 7.30 and it's about 10 o'clock now. You took all the flatties, but <laughs> that's just how it goes. Well, I just spotted the good gutter on the beach, mate, and sat right, right where it needed to be. That's and it. The, and, and that's, it goes to show it works. And that's important as well because beaches, all the way along, it looks like you're fishing the same water, but it's so different. One's going to be, one patch is going to be a lot deeper, one's going to be sandier. You've got to spot your gutters. And you know exactly. what, we've got a nice platform up here, we're at Sea Spray. Let's get uh, some sausages on the 
some barbecue. Yeah, they have Maybe everything. some late bacon and eggs. And some flatties. Some flatties. The great thing about caravan parks like this, we've got facilities like this that we can use. Even though we have the great campers with the stove and all the rest of them, we've got a facility like this, we might as well use it. It's nice and warm here. As the weather went from 30 degrees to about 15 overnight. Spectacular, and it's another flatty. Only a little one though. But <laughs> he is a bit of a cutie, Mick. A bit smaller than the ones we were getting earlier. So they must get bigger as the morning gets on. Yeah, yeah the bigger ones come out. They're smarter. They know there's less predators around and more food to find. Well, we'll show the viewers. There you go. It's actually a size flathead. Size flathead. Probably won't keep it unless you want it. Good eating size. Well, we've got, we, we actually do have all the fillets from this morning. Yep. So if you want to, we can add to the rest, but you're cleaning this one. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so sun's just setting, fishing's about to kick off. Normally around this time of the light is when the fish start to wake up and start feeding and coming in a bit closer. So that's when surf fishing becomes a bit more of an option. So we'll put him away, because um, we've got quite a few people here, so a couple extra fillets never hurts. Um, chuck another bait out and see if there's anything else kicking around. Well, this is our last hurrah. It's our last day down here at um, Sea Spray. Uh, we've got all the surf rods out again this morning. It's about 9 o'clock. We uh, had a very late night on the beach all for one flathead, but you know, that's, that's just a part of fishing. So, uh, we've got the bait out now. We're really just hoping to get some sort of fish off the beach. It's gone from 30 degrees to about 15 degrees, so it is quite cold and at the start of summer. So, but that's Melbourne weather for you. Beautiful one day, crappy the next. <laughs> uh, Jesse's rigging up a Pananoster. I've got Nixon over here with Pananosters. We've got two end baits with eel and squid heads. Uh, and we've got them behind the back breakers, hoping to maybe get a, a gummy coming through, so. Too much. As these little white white water waves come in, you just want to be like you're feeding the chooks just a little bit. And let that take it out. You go throwing it out the deep and it'll just, you know, you want it to disperse slowly and more often than a lot at once. Yeah, it's every 10, 15 minutes or so I do that. And that should bring the fish around. Buddy. Yeah. Sure. I reckon. Well, hopefully it's a nice and big frog. Enjoy the rest of the flathead we've been catching. Well, we really wanted to see a nice big shark board in off the beach this weekend. And I, I said to me, Mrs. I'd love to see a hammerhead. Well, the boys up here have caught one. And it's a monster. This thing is huge. 
Hello. Hey, you on there, buddy? Cool little critters they are, aren't they? Yeah. Bloody cool little fish. Nixon's on again. Must be the car by real. Our journey has ended down here at the Sea Spray Caravan Park on the 90 Mile Beach. Yeah, uh, what was it, 15 gummies, two bronzies? It was about six flathead. Right. <laughs> Not many better eating fish. My best eating fish in my opinion. And um, we haven't really been smiled upon by the weather gods. Even just now we just heard thunder before the camera went on mate. Yeah, so. we've uh, slipped in where we can to do a bit of fishing. Yeah. Um, to be honest, if we were a family getting away doing a bit of fish, we'd mm. classify this as a great weekend. Oh, oh look, but, it, has, it has been absolutely fantastic. It's just good to get away, get the campus set up, enjoy it, have a few beverages, something to eat, get down on the beach, have a fish when we can, and we've done that. Yeah. And uh, we've stayed at the um, Sea Spray Caravan Park. We were going to stay at Golden Beach. It was a bit crowded, and one of the campsites were, was full of broken glass, which was very yeah. sad to see. Guys, um, if you go out there, keep Australia beautiful, take your crap home with you. It's that simple, isn't it? Easily, and like you got to think about people's safety as well. Little mm. kids running That's around right. in bare feet, like yeah. it's it's not just about so being we, too lazy. And um, I must admit, one of the walks was quite the one campsite that was free. It was a bit of a walk down the sand dune, and I didn't like the idea of that. So, no. <laughs> and down here, mate, they've, like last time I came in, I have been here a few times at the Sea Spray Caravan Park. They've got a great access track to the beach, which has now been built with stairs and a landing, so you can view the gutters and find the optimal gutter to fish. Yeah, it's really good. It's really so, accessible. I mean, yeah. I am. Very weak when it comes to walking around in bare feet, but I haven't needed shoes all weekend. So no. very easy, quick walk, very well maintained. Hey, hey, I didn't fall over. You didn't for once. <laughs> Not that anyone saw. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, we'll see you next week, next episode, next time. Whenever. <laughs>